Even though writing is an essential skill in academia, it can be a massive headache, not just for students, but for professional academic researchers too. And one of the reasons why writing is so difficult is that at every point in your writing, there's a vast range of possibilities in terms of subject matter, in terms of structure, in terms of style, sentence construction and word choice, all of which require decisions. And one of the ways people try to deal with this is to attempt to get everything down without worrying too much about these choices. This way, you can fill pages, but you keep your options open because you'll come back and edit it later. But there are a few problems with this approach. One is that it can get really messy. And the more you've written, the more difficult it is to tidy up and trim down, partly because it's hard to edit something that has no structure, and partly because people usually find it hard to remove ideas once they're on the page. The second major problem is that if you consistently avoid making choices, then you train that as a habitual response whenever you face a difficulty in your writing. So you never develop the skill or the confidence to make choices, but then you have to make all of those decisions at the end when you're under massive time pressure. And another major problem is that if you try to put down everything, then you'll have no idea where the end point is because there will always be more you could potentially add. So in this video, I'm going to suggest a completely different approach. Instead of trying to get everything down and leaving all the possibilities open, what we want to do is put some constraints in place. And one of the reasons for this is to simplify, to reduce the number of possibilities. And the other reason is that constraints actually help you to make other creative decisions. And once you've made one decision, it's easier to make more. So the first constraint I'll give you is to limit the scale. Instead of thinking about writing an entire chapter or a thesis totaling tens of thousands of words, let's limit it to around a thousand. So that's about four pages. It's not so much, but it's enough to work with and it's enough to communicate something significant. So we've reduced the scale. Now let's try to narrow the scope and deal with a specific issue, which could be, just to give an example, a particular theory or method that you're using in your research. So we've set some constraints in terms of scale and scope, but we can go further. So if I say you have just a thousand words to write on a specific topic, your natural temptation might be to try to cram in as much as you possibly can to show how much you know or show how much you've read about the topic. But this isn't an undergraduate exam where you lose marks if you miss something. This is academic writing where the assumption should be that you know more than you can communicate and your job is to select the most relevant information from your knowledge or from the literature. And the examiner wants you to make those choices. They do not want you to dump everything on the page because if you do that, then you're making them do the work of figuring out what's relevant. So you have to decide what you want to say about the subject, what your point of view is, and what you want the reader to understand. So here's an example. So in my own PhD, I worked with a technique called near field optical microscopy. And like any other technique, it had two sides. It had theory and implementation. I was an experimentalist rather than a theorist. So I chose to focus much more on the implementation side. So I decided before writing that I would only include the parts of the theory, the key principles that were essential. I decided what I wanted to communicate and what I didn't. I limited it to specific points, and that meant that I only had to think about how I expressed those points and linked them together. So if there was a concept I initially intended to include, but I couldn't find a way to link it to the rest, I left it out. So my default position, instead of putting everything in, was basically, if in doubt, leave it out. And later, when I was writing about implementation, I included a lot more, but it was broken down into smaller sections, each with a specific focus 
and a limited number of clear and specific points. Again, leaving out anything I didn't think was important, interesting, and relevant. And even though I included less, my writing was much stronger because I was clear in what I was trying to communicate. And the end result was that the examiners loved my thesis, and they said that it was one of the best introductions to the subject they'd ever read. So try it out. Try to write around a thousand words with a specific focus, but deliberately leaving out most of what you know to just communicate the most interesting and important points. It might feel uncomfortable, but that could be because you're fighting against your usual habits, and it can take some time and some practice to develop new skills. Now, in writing the script for this video, I followed my own advice, and I haven't included everything you need to know about writing well. So I'll do a part two to cover some of the things I deliberately left out of this video, and I'll also address any questions or criticisms if you post them in the comments below. So if you'd like to know when part two is available, don't just subscribe here on YouTube, head to my website at phd.academy, sign up for the email list, and then I can let you know directly when part two is ready. In the meantime, you can check out my video on writer's block, which I'll link to up here. And if you have a bit more time to spare and you want to dive into more detail, then check out this lecture that I gave at the University of Nottingham a couple of years ago. So that's it from me. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.